and not seeing anybody as competition? Definitely not. I'd be dumb to say that. Do you feel there's better rappers than you in the SA? No. This is what we're here for. It's yeah. the Altino podcast. Yeah. Jo, 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 Jo. Ha, ha, ha. I just been here. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Let's go. Tenth episode of the El Tito podcast. I need everybody in here to clap it up one time. That's that's a milestone. That's 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 a milestone, man. And um, it's crazy. I need to give a shout out to everybody that's been involved in the process to get us to the tenth episode. Um, it's been a long way coming here. So we're gonna give shout outs to all the nine people who were involved. Okay. First, if I forget, you guys will help me out. First episode. Um, the guest we had was AKA. Make some noise for Super Mega one time. Um, who was the second episode? Um, Pearl Tusi. Clap it out for Pearl Tusi. Third episode was uh, KO. Clap it out for KO. Fourth episode was Nota. Clap it out for Nota. <laughs> yes, Nota. <laughs> Fifth episode was Mithali. Clap it out for Mithali. Sixth episode was Blondie London. Clap it up for me. Seventh episode was Nadia Nakai. Shoo. Eighth episode was um, Casper Nyoves. <laughs> Ninth episode was the only, the only one, man. Big hustle. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the tenth episode, we have the one and only, you know what I'm saying? The middleweight champion. Um, fresh out of a flawless victory in Zambia. We got the one and only Nasty C in the building. Yo, <laughs> 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 say straight to it. No waste the time. It's crazy. What's going on, my dog? What's going on, Nasty? I'm chilling, dog. How you, you man? Good? I'm good, dog. I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. This shit is Thank so dope, man. Through, bro. Fine. Yeah, yeah. This is a full circle moment for me because you forgot. Um, before I had a podcast, like maybe. A year and a half ago, mm. I know we had like USA before we started <clears> this. We had like a couple of junk moments, yeah. you know. Nasty's always wilding in the club, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm the sober one. Um, ah, we what? had <laughs> the cat. Yeah. We we are at um, backstage at Hard Rock Cafe, I think. Yeah, and uh, I was speaking to you, saying, "Yo, I'm about to start a podcast and everything." Like, oh, really? I, yeah, this is before I started the podcast. I think Les told you that I'm doing some OnlyFans. Ah, yeah, yeah. Remember? <laughs> That's the one I remember. What's no, that one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is before I had a podcast. Oh, I was like, shit. like, yeah, I'm starting a podcast. And I hadn't had no episode. And now, yeah. you're on the 10th episode. So Nah, congrats, man. This thing nah, is it's, thank it's you, really dope, dog. I'm a fan, dog. Nah, thank you. Thank I have a couple thank of favorite you. episodes. Funny as fuck. Yeah, tell me your favorites, actually. The MT one is my, my the MT ultimate is your favorite. favorite, yeah. And then the cast. <laughs> One comes second. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. I think this was gonna be the favorite, right? We we gonna we gonna make a first one Hopefully, out of this one. You know? Yes, sir. I want to give a big shout out to Samsung. You guys can see we're in a different place right now. Uh, design quarter Samsung. You know what I mean? They got us good. We're looking good out here. Man, it looks beautiful out here. I need a kitchen like this. Yeah, it's nice. It's a little beautiful. living area kitchen. You dig? Yeah, man. So um, let's start it off with. Obviously, you just dropped a new album. Yeah. Um, before, like, the first record on the new album, um, I think it's called She's Gone. Yeah. Um, no, it's a longer title. She's Gone. She's Gone and the, the end. end. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good place for us to start the interview because we're going to go all over the place yeah. with this interview. Uh, but um, the beautiful thing about your new album is very introspective. Yeah. Um, you let us in in Nasty C's life. Yeah. And I think it's going to give us a lot of topics to speak about. Yeah. Um, let's start with the first song on the album. Um, you mentioned on the album that um, your mother had passed away mm -hmm. and she got killed just before your birth, your first birthday. Mm. Yeah. And tell me, how do you feel it affected you growing up without a mother? It did. 100% it did, man. I had a lot of stepmothers growing up. Some I got mm -hmm. along with, some I didn't. Some I was too young to even know that it wasn't my real mother. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But like, yeah, man, just, just growing up like that, 
it's, it's kind of weird because it's like you see all these mothers come and go, but your father's still here. So you're like, okay, you're my guy. But even when that relationship is not working out really, then you kind of just feel lost, you understand? You don't mm -hmm. really know. You don't know who's in your corner type of vibe. Mm -hmm. So it was like it was it, it definitely was weird growing up, but I would say it it definitely helped shape and and mold the person that I am today. You know what I mean? I'm a very independent person. I don't even like asking for help from no one. You understand? And I, I, I like that. I take pride in that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it's like far as as far as speaking about that kind of stuff in the music, it's not my first time speaking about yeah, it really. Yeah, I've heard you I did it in things, like yeah. yeah, you understand, like Price City days. Mm -hmm. I used to do that kind of kind of stuff a lot. Just just talk about the the most personal stuff ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like I'm just going back to that man. Just using this music as like my my journal, my my diary. When you said stuff. it was kind of weird of you growing up, are you saying it was kind of weird in terms of like maybe your dad like having maybe certain people who are stepmoms, but they maybe not consistent in your life. They're not there the whole time. They leave yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, it's like that. You know. And then yeah. some is like some will come with a kid or two. Okay. And then that'll obviously be the favorites. Uh, and then it's like, you don't get the same kind of treatment. You don't get the clothes. The, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that, man. And as a kid, that kind of stuff really, really affects you, bro. Yeah. It's like, you don't really look at it. It's like, I, I'll get clothes in December. Yeah. It's like, no, I need clothes. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? You're supposed to be my mother. You know what I mean? Cause, so that kind yeah. of stuff. But also just like, you got to think about me being so different from everyone else. I'm an introvert already. I'm, I have like social anxiety. I'm just a socially awkward person. Now it's a whole lot better because we have a lot to speak about. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's like growing up, didn't really have a voice like that. Mm -hmm. I have a, I'm soft-spoken, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So all those things make you very timid and shy and stuff like that. So it's like when you get home, that's that's what you feel like. That's what you're supposed to feel like. Ah, I can be I'm as loud as I feel. want. I'm, yeah. You know what I mean? This yeah. is home. Yeah. I can, I can dance over here, do yeah, all this. Yeah. But it wasn't even like that, even Shit. at home. Damn. Because it's like I'm still too scared to speak to my pops about some stuff. It's mm. like, yo, pops, I'm starting to look at girls now, but I can't I can't speak to him about that kind of stuff because yeah. he's just not that kind of guy. You yeah. know what I mean? He doesn't, doesn't do those one-on-ones. Yeah. He doesn't do them, you know? And then I don't have a mother to do that with, so who do I do that with? I can do that with my brother sometimes, but it's yeah. like, yo, know, it's like with them, I was like in this weird thing of just like trying to impress them versus mm -hmm. asking them for help and Damn. advice. You understand? So it was yeah. like, it was, it was just weird. A weird situation, man. Especially in the like the teen years, that's when you need that kind of support and that structure. You need it the most. And with your father's thing, you've actually been on this throughout your career, but yeah. you and your father's relationship in yeah. terms of like you not being happy with him. Mm. But on this new album, you actually mm. dedicated a Give song to him. Yeah. Which is a beautiful song. Because yeah, we don't usually hear um rappers. Praise or anyone father, credit no? their father. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's always yeah, like the mother, dear mama. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. It, it was it was kind of refreshing to hear that that perspective, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what made you feel like this time, like, nah, it's the right time. Let me let me dedicate something to my father. Because you've you've said you're not happy about this, yeah. you know. What has changed? Maybe you being a father, like no, gave a different no, this this is something that clicked in my mind about three years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Even that song is like three years old, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I think what really helped man is like me becoming the head of a household mm -hmm. and getting to understand it's like yo it's not easy. Mhm. Mm understand? I have it way 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 easier than him because it's just like what I I do what I love to do for a living. Mm -hmm. With him it wasn't like that. That wasn't the case. He still had to take care of his family, his sister's family, that family, that family and he was still like doing a job that he's not really passionate about. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's it's hard here. It's this whole racism thing. Mm -hmm. All these there's just like so many things that were just like on his shoulders, but he's Can still we not talk about racism on his shoulders. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Trust me, that's not my favorite <laughs> subject. That's not my you know No, MT already addressed. I know. <laughs> we, I don't want to hear an SEC racism story. MT's nah, already nah. addressed. No, no, no. Cool. All right. Yeah. But yeah. just like yo, mm -hmm. growing up, man, it's like I I kind of just realized, yo, as 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 hard as it was for me growing up, because obviously I was a kid, so mm -hmm. I'm not gonna not blame him for some stuff. It should have yeah. been easier. His methods should have been a little different, but like I understand, Do you understand. I understand, dog. I understand what the background. Comes that's, from. What, that's why I'm actually. I don't. I don't. I don't really know, dog. I think mm. I just. I just grew up, man. I just. I just went into like a space where I was just like, I. Right, you know what? I'm going through a lot of stuff with a lot of different people, and it's just life is not really fun right now. We keeping the lights on and we keeping the food going and the careers is moving and stuff. No, no, no. This is like, like three years ago. Okay. Yeah, it was like I had a lot of fallouts. Like in the last 
four years or yeah. so, a lot of fallouts. With L- friends? Family. Friends, business members, mm-hmm. family, all that kind of shit. It was just like a lot of fallouts. Like, what, 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 like made, a lot. what made you think I attributed to that? You have any fallouts? I think me growing into the person who I really want to be mm-hmm. and then kind of just realizing, nah, your plan is cool, but I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Your thing, your preferred thing to do when we're bored is cool, but I don't want to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if if those people are real too, they'll be like, all right, cool, I understand. Let's do your thing then. But it's like, they were like, nah, trust me, this is the thing. And I'm just like, yo, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not where I want to take my career. Or that's not the person I want to be. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that's why you part with friends and stuff. You just grow and you just take different parts, man. It's just, it happens in life. Yeah. It's just a shame that in this case, it's like people that business and pleasure was kind of mixed into like this one thing. Yeah. Do you understand? So mm-hmm. when there's a fallout, it's like you're really left by yourself. Mm. Do you understand? Because now they're all gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's people that I see 24 7. It's yeah. like I, I'm there with you when I'm performing, but I'm also there with you after the performance because you're my boy and we yeah. live together and shit like that. So it's like all those things messed me up for a little bit, but for the most part, I was like, all right, this is growing up, I guess. Uh, and then I was like, okay, cool. And then it, I just started to put stuff in, into perspective, man. Just Unfortunately, you can't escape it. The more you grow up, you yeah. are going to lose friends. Yeah, you know? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it actually takes me to. Is maybe like even like you obviously started a label Tor Rex. Mm-hmm. Uh when you say you had fallouts with personal and business. Mm-hmm. Um I know you announced uh probably a year ago or whatever, yeah. Rolene is no longer with Tor Rex. Yeah. Is this thing that like wasn't that? that wasn't a fallout though. Okay. That wasn't necessarily business, a fallout. It yeah. was it was uh it was just like, all right, cool. We we we've done what we needed to do. Mm-hmm. I've helped you out wherever I can. But right now I'm in a space where it's like I have so much going on in my personal life and in my business life that it's like, yo, if 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 you're not gonna be willing to take some of these things to the chin type of vibe and just like, all right, cool, this is a part of like the come up, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, you take some L's here, take some dubs here. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not gonna be able to take those and say, you know what, but we move, we move though. No matter what happens, we move. I'm mm-hmm. still here, da, uh, mm-hmm. then this is going to have to end because yeah. this is how I got it out. I got it out the mud like that, yeah. you know? It's, it's a lot of L's you take. A Facts. lot of L's. Facts. Like a shitload of L's. Yeah. You understand? And you can't just blame the person who, on on paper, it says this person is going to make you become whatever. It's like at the end of the day, the people have to, the people out there are the ones that make you the star. You understand? I, I can do what I can. I can do what I can. Whereas like with the timing, stuff like that. Plus I think we put out an album uh, around covid times uh-huh. and it was like that just made it tricky but look at me i dropped the album in covid and that was tricky for me too but mm-hmm. i took that and stride dog and i kept going mm. you understand but let that that's just like it yeah it, it didn't work out we did what we could and what we had to do and stuff like that but it just it didn't didn't work out yeah. it wasn't necessarily a fallout though there's no bad blood it's just mm-hmm. like I, it came to an end that relationship or whatever it's like all right cool that's Shout crazy I, I i sense a lot of like um for lack of a better word, soft cuff, you know, with you right now. Like, 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 I feel you know who you are. When you look in the mirror, you know what the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? You're not in a um, time where you're trying to please anyone. It's like, I feel you on something. Like, yo, if you're riding on this train, you with me. If you're not, that's cool. Yeah. 100%. And that's beautiful to be in that position. 100%, man. Yeah, it feels, I feel weightless, though. You understand? (laughs) Dead ass, though. Do you know you were in a position where I, I know I'm speaking for most gents out there, like yeah. 90% at least. Yeah. Most guys want to be with a girl that they were with when they were broke. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Before you got it, before you got the cash, before... Like, this is every... 90% of guys and those 10% of bozos don't matter. But <laughs> 90% of guys, you want to be with a girl that struggled with you in the beginning because you know she genuinely loves you. Yeah. And we are living in times now where relationships are transactional yeah it's not about like yo yeah. if i was going through it or whatever you know what i'm saying would you say so like we have to highlight your relationship because it's oh, like thank you something really amazing maybe tell us how you guys met you met at school right yeah we we met the crazy thing is we met in primary school and i tried to like i tried to That's holler crazy. at her but she was, primary school. yeah she wasn't having it for real I think the height gap also was a, was a bit intense. 
<laughs> it was a bit intense in primary school, bro. And also, it's just, like I said, socially mm. awkward, bro. I was like, yo, but this is one of the things I was like, yo, I feel so strongly about this one that I'm going to have to just, I'm, I'm going to have to take a swing. If I, if it's an L, it's an L. Fuck. For real. Like, yeah, so it's like, primary, like, how old were you? you primary be- school, yeah. I'm in grade seven. She's in grade six. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see her around a lot. It's that thing where it's like, yo, even when you and the boys are just walking around and you see them, you're like, yo, tense that girl there. And everyone is like, yo, yo, you see there's the, there's the we had a guy in our, in our squad who was like yeah. very good with the hands. Uh-huh. You know? he, was, he had no problem with that. Uh-huh. He tried to go, uh, they turned him down. Ah, uh, so you you influenced the homie to go first. So you, yeah, because I was like, scared. I was like, yo, I was like, you know what? You're the better one out of all of us. You're the better one, though. Go for it. You know, one of us has to get it. I know I'm not gonna get it. You know. And then, so and then you the went. The crest just dumped me. You know, that's foul. You went, <laughs> took the L. Mm-hmm. I tried to took the L. Couple years later. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You tried and took an L. Why do you think you took an L at that time? Hey, boy. Like I said, the height gap. Was a bit much. Nah, you, you also, got me. Nah, also, you fucking. Was also, it just your height? I don't think it was just a height. I think it was also the shoes I had on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was the shoes I had what on. Shoes? Like, this is cool. Hey, boy, like, you, know, you know the, the eight, though. They're like, yo, makumba, kumba. I didn't have the toughies. Everyone had the toughies shined up nice. They had the, you know, the laces in a bow and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm out there with the kumba kumbas, boy. Plus, my my dad wouldn't buy me a new a new a new school bag, dog, like a nice one. So he yeah. gave me gave me his old work case. It's like it has shelves, dog. <laughs> so I'm not really looking too good, right? So I tried, I tried. Wait, yo, wait. <laughs> hey, it was bad, boy. It was bad. Yeah. Nah, it was bad. So, yo, so uh, wow, I need to put some respect on Tuffies, yo. Like, yeah, so- <laughs> Tuffies can save you, bro. You know, you can make them shiny, bro. I'm telling you. Hey. Nah, it was bad. It was so bad. So, I need to be out there like, nah, this nigga ain't got the Tuffies. I can't give him no play. Like, yeah, <laughs> now you can you imagine. I'm wearing Kumba Kumbas and I'm still short. It's like, yo, this guy's really short. <laughs> you understand? He's practically in high heels and he's still short. So... <laughs> So what did I do? I, do? I remember this thing is like it's very clear in my mind. You know, I, I caught her walking. Uh, just like okay, so like a triple decker type vibe. You understand? Uh-huh. But there's like there's these ramps that go towards the tuck shop assembly area. Uh-huh. So I'm coming down there with the homies. I see her again. I'm like, yo, boys, there she is again. Uh-huh. And they're like, I right, thought, just go for it. I was like, alright, quit. All right, just go wait for me around the corner there. Alright, they go wait there. I see her. So I call her. I'm like, yo, can you come up here for a second? Right, she's like, okay, cool. Right, she walks up. Nervous, shit in my pants. <laughs> All right, she gets there. I do this dumb thing where it's like, yo, okay, if I'm short standing up straight, maybe I should lean on something. So it looks like, so it looks like it's not me that's short. It's the way I'm standing. I stood against the wall like this. <laughs> I know I look stupid as fuck, though. I stood against the wall like this. I asked her for a name. She tells me, I'm like, oh, great, are you doing? She tells me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I see you around here. You're not close. She's like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, ah, can I get your number? She's like, ah, you waste my time. And she just leaves. What? Took the L. But I was like, you know what? I was very happy that I, I managed to even, you know? Even spoke, spoke to her. Yeah. Like, while was shaking Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. To, just to have the guts yeah. to do that. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? I, I was like, I right, know I'm proud of myself. I went back to the boys. It's like, ah, we laughed it off, whatever. I kept, yeah. the, kept the pushing. All right, okay. From grade, from, from there, I go to grade eight. Mm-hmm. All right, my rap thing is kind of taking off now in school. Mm-hmm. Grade nine, I, I moved to the school across the streets. Take the bridge, you just walk up, it's, it's there. Now that's the high school. This is Orient Hill, that's Strelitzia. Mm-hmm. Now I'm in Strelitzia, grade nine. All right, now, now I'm like, I'm known now. Oh, Do you yeah. understand? You're now, known in the schools. In the, in the school, in the area, back at home. How old are you? Plus we from the same neighborhood, don't forget this now. Right, yeah. I, ca- I can't remember how old okay. I was. Uh, okay, so now it's like, yo, all right, this man's got a little bit of a buzz. You know, he's okay. the kid that walks with a bounce. He's got an accent. He raps. Uh, he's, so he's somebody. Yeah. Are you still an introvert at that time? But the rap. St- still am, but okay, the rap cool. is helping because uh, now it's cool. like people come up to me and ask me questions. So now there's stuff to speak about. Uh, I don't have to initiate the conversation. Uh, understand? I feel you. All right, so grade nine goes. Grade ten. Now she comes to my school. She's grade nine. I'm grade ten. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm not a freshman. Yeah. Now, you, know, you understand? Yeah. I'm, I'm inside now. Uh-huh. All right, she's there. We we do these things every every morning. We do like a practice. I was in a group called Fluetic Element. Every morning we we rehearse. Every break time we do freestyles. Mm-hmm. And then after school it's like we go our separate ways. Uh, in the mornings now she starts coming to like where we practice at. Now mm-hmm. she's coming, she's diving. Yo, I'm commanding the room, dog. You understand? For like, real? Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> We're rapping there, mm-hmm. talk, doing our thing. Every single morning it's like we're putting on a performance, pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know. And then this is, it got to a point where it's like. 
All right, I'm seeing her. I was like, okay, cool. Now she's like, she dives me now. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, I speak to her. Oh, actually, what happened is I think she got my Mix It ID. Damn, and she texted she me. Mix It times? Yeah, Mix It yeah, times, yeah. what? Yeah. So I Mix It ID, I, we start chatting, whatever. I, 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 she's like, oh, yeah, was that your thing? I was like, yeah, I saw you. Okay, cool. You coming tomorrow? Yeah, I'm coming. She comes the next day. We have the same phone. So it's like, okay, now I have some stuff to speak about other mm -hmm. than myself. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we have the same phone. Uh, uh, what would happen if what we stopped phones? It was the Samsung Star. Shout out Samsung. Shout out Samsung. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mm -hmm. Samsung Star. Okay, so we swap phones for the for the day. Mm -hmm. You know? She gives me her password. I give her my password. Start going through pictures and stuff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, going through pictures. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole thing. It's like okay. we're into each other, but yeah. we're too scared to say it. I know I'm scared. Shitless to say it, you uh -huh. know? So it's like, okay, cool. Are right, we vibing out? And then, and then I think, I think at the time I even, I had a, I had a girlfriend at that time. Hey. She was also in grade nine actually, but she was just like, she was just trying to get her out the picture. And then I think. Yo, who was trying to get her out the Sam picture? Sam was trying to get that other girl out oh, the picture. Oh, for real? She's like, yo, move out the way. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So now, now that we're vibing on that level, we're really like, now we're like friends, dog. You know what I mean? It's like calls in the AMs. We're just like, we're vibing out. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then this one day she was like, yo, one of my friends uh, really likes you, but. Uh, what would you do if they came up to you and told you? Like, would that be weird, a girl telling you? I was like, no, that wouldn't be weird. I would like that, actually. Mm -hmm. And then she, she was like, I'm the friend. I was like, oh, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Then I will we'll work it out. So Sam pulled up on you? Yeah. 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 Ladies, come on. You, you oh, how the tables are out have there shook. Like, you can speak to a guy. Yeah, of course, man. This but is like, like 10 years deep now. Yeah, yeah. man. Huh? 11 years. This is our 11th That's crazy. Year, Okay, yeah, yeah, she, she pulls up on you? She pulls up on mm -hmm. me. I, next day, I go to her. We do the whole thing. It's like walking off to school. Okay, she ditches her friends. I ditch my friends. Take the same taxi, Vela. We live in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I walk oh, home. Oh, man. I, look at, look at, you even took the same taxi. You understand? I, I saw a romantic Shop story, around. man. Y'all niggas never took taxis with your girl, man. Yeah, so I'm the one opening the taxi door there. Oh, madame. <laughs> you know? Damn. Opening yeah. the, you know the foldable <laughs> shit? <laughs> Fold that bitch. Yeah. You know? Okay, and then we get back to, to Ilovo. I'm walking. We, we we find like a little jola out there. We stay there. We stand there for like an hour, two hours, whatever. I, I just chatting. Oh, man. And then it's like, uh, I don't know if that was the same day, but I think one of the other taxis had one of her, her neighbors in it. Mm -hmm. And they saw us. Mm -hmm. And they went home to her place mm -hmm. and told her mother. And... Next thing I see this BMW speeding towards us, dog. I was like, yo, what's happening right now? The, a big brother gets out the car. Uh, he doesn't even get out the car, actually. He doesn't even speak, actually, bro. He just fucking parks there, just goes like this. Yo, yo now I'm thinking he's going to hop out and whip my ass, dog. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't. She gets in the car. She leaves. Uh, and as, as they were speeding home, I'm like, yo, this bro's definitely going to drop her off there and come back for me. So you know what? Let me get a move on and go home. <laughs> I go home, but it turns out it's nothing. She, her mother, disciplined her a little bit, but it was like, I, right, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You're fine. No one's coming for you. All right, okay, cool. And then, and then after that, we were pretty much girlfriend and boyfriend, man. That's crazy. And what's crazy is that that was like I think that was towards the end of the fourth term. So we weren't really seeing each other because I wasn't the type of kid to be outside in December, like in, in you know what I mean? Going to her, it's like the same neighborhood, but not really the same street. There's like quite a walk to go to her place. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know those people around the area. So why would I even be around there? You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I didn't really even see her around that December time. I'm in my world, she's in her world, but we're still talking. And then when school started again next year, just picked off where we left off. All right. So yeah. I, I really want to actually take a deep dive into you guys' story because like that was a long story your relationship yeah. yeah it's all good bro it's a podcast yeah. you know what I'm saying we're here to kick it yeah. you know and um, <clears throat> if you think about it bro like what you guys have is an anomaly right now because yeah. a lot of people a lot of relationships don't last long yeah. you know what I'm saying like what like if you could like maybe see like okay what's made me and Sam last this long Yeah. what attributes need to be there in a relationship yeah um for for a relationship to last as long because people can't keep relationships these days i think it's like s stuff that you need on a daily not even just from your person mm -hmm. but as a person okay you need to like love every now and then you need to get some stuff off your chest facts. so you need someone who can who can you know what i mean give you all those things facts i you can know? never be like a girl with no sense of humor that's that's a big ah, thing. no yeah. oh my god no that would be 
I can't do that. Okay. And she she has the best sense of humor. She understands my sense of humor. It's mm -hmm. like, bro, I do I I dead ass do uh, stand up sets. What? Just for her, yeah. So you say you guys have been together for eleven years, right? Yeah. Um, broken up so many times though. It's crazy. But I mean, it's normal, bro. Yeah. So for the fact that you guys found each other back again, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, it's like you breaking up with me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Fuck. <laughs> Another thing um, you mentioned on the album was like when you spoke about obviously you a new father. Let's clap it up. He's a new father. You know what I mean? A, a, um, you have a son. Uh -huh. um, you mentioned on the song that you thought you would have asked her to marry you before you guys had a son. Uh -huh. And you guys have been together for this long. What, a lot of people usually when they're together for like maybe three years, four years, they have the pressures of like, yo, we need to get married. Yeah. What 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 what's made you like not fall to the pressure and just do you? I think, and I'm not speaking for people here. This is not a fact. This is just mm -hmm. how I think. I think a lot of people get together and they make it to like the three year mark, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Holy shit, it's never been this long for me. Mm -hmm. It's been this long for you. No, mm -hmm. we should lock it down now. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's just tradition." That's just like, okay, if we can be together for this long, we should definitely lock it down. And also just like pressure from parents. It's like, oh, yeah, it's time to go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Parents can talk some stuff into your ear mm -hmm. and then you get it going. But with us, it's like, yo, we're, we're, we're doing so well without anyone else's advice, input, mm -hmm. two cents, none of that stuff that we're like, okay, look, we're perfect like this. Mm -hmm. You know, once we bring in all these pressures of just like involving so many other people and, and all these things, it's like, it's, it's gonna rock our boat a little bit. I'm not saying we can't take it. We can take it for sure. But like, mm -hmm. I would rather we do it when when we're ready on our own terms. Do you understand? Not to, not to go against tradition and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But like, when we're ready, we're gonna do it. But it's like we're not we're not gonna let people talk us into it. No matter who they are, whether it's our parents or not, they've suggested so many times. For real. So many times. So many times. Mm -hmm. At the like eight year mark, mm -hmm. they were like, eh. <laughs> they were like, nah, not yet. You know, even a year ago, um. When I told my father that we're having a kid, mm -hmm. he started bringing these ideas back. I was like, I hear you, but you know, I'm, we're going to do it this way. Bro, that yeah. is... It's unheard of, I know, and it's no, like... No, dog, that, that is the <clears throat> freaking right way shit should be done. Yeah, man. Because yeah. you are like only you're marrying each other. Why exactly. should everyone else's opinion matter? That's our thing. That's our thing. It's like, this is our, our thing. When we're going through the hardships and this thing is like, it feels like, yo, it's going down. Mm -hmm. No one else is there, you understand? And mm -hmm. even if we tried to involve them and call them for advice, they wouldn't really understand like that. They'd give us this vague advice, oh, trust your heart, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's like, we're there through the ups and the downs. We are the ones that have to bear all that kind of stuff. So it's like, yo, we, we know us better than anyone else in this world. Yeah. So let's just do it our way. No, that's dope. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to you for that, bro. Yeah. And shout out for you for also being brave enough um, yeah. to show your family, um, yeah. to be that vulnerable. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I feel like with this album, you are like completely vulnerable and letting people in your life and yeah. being truly you. Yeah. You know 100%. what I'm saying? So I, I'm curious though. <clears throat> if you can give me a breakdown, okay? Yeah. Let's speak about Nasty C's albums. Give me Nasty C's best album. We're gonna go from best we have Bed Hair, yeah. we have Strings and Bling. Yeah, Zulu Man with some power. Zulu Man with some power. Yeah, and then we have And we song. have a new one. I love it here. Yeah. Give me from number four, three, two, one. Okay. So we're gonna start with four. The worst. I don't wanna say worst. Well, I mean the Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. That's not fucking sugar coat right. shit. The worst. All right, let's get it. <laughs> Call a spade a spade, man. Alright. Uh I would say Zulu Man with some power, mm -hmm. you know? And this is not me saying, oh, no, I did a terrible job. No, mm -hmm. I, I did an outstanding job, but mm -hmm. it didn't connect. It was fantasy-driven. Mm -hmm. Wasn't too much realism in that. Mm -hmm. It was like I was trying to create this world, whatever. I, I just trying to get very psychedelic with it and be like, mm -hmm. oh, this is escape music, escape mm -hmm. from reality music. Just because of where I where I was, mm -hmm. might have been a cry for help, but <laughs> for real, <laughs> that's a chat for another day. But you know, and so, on some Zulu man with some power. Yeah, um, a lot of people heard you for the first time. 
um, rapping in, rapping Zulu, in right? Vanek, in yeah, Zulu. Yeah. Um, were, were they pressures from people saying, Nancy, see, you dope, but you sound American. Why are you not rapping in your own language? I don't care about that. But uh -huh. I think another thing that contributed to it not performing as well as I would have liked it to mm -hmm. is that it was an album inspired by someone else. Who's and it wasn't, it wasn't like me going, you know what? I'm at a point in my life where I want to do this. It was, and trust me, this guy is a goat. Okay. Do you understand? He said something and I was like, yo, if he said it, I have to do it. Let me do it now. Okay. Do you understand? But not understand that it's like, yo, this is your own journey. You have to yeah. do it at your timing when you're, uh -huh. when you're feeling good. I was kind of, I guess you would say I was a little starstruck. Okay. Um, it was no idea. Oh, for real? Yeah, no idea. Me mm -hmm. and him had a very, very good convo, man. Good chat about just like culture, music, tradition, mm -hmm. crossing borders, flying the flag type of stuff. And I was like, damn, I have to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so what do I do? Title, Zulu man. So people know <clears throat> I'm Zulu, this and that. Mm -hmm. I have to have a Zulu verse in there so people understand that I, I really am Zulu. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. All these things just kind of, mm -hmm. they influence me like that, you know? But I don't, I don't regret it, mm -hmm. you know? I don't regret it. I, I still think I did an outstanding job, but I feel like if that was at my own timing, I would have done a, a way better job and it would have connected. Okay. Do you know? Mm -hmm. But also you have to understand the fact that it was like COVID times and yeah. I'm a piano was like the, the new sexy thing. Mm -hmm. And it was like people just like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think Zulu Man's on Power is number four. Number three... Ish. It's tough. It's yo, 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 yo. I think I want to put, I want to put strings and bling. Nah, at, you bugging. I don't, you nah, understand? You listen, bugging. listen, listen to my reasoning though. Mm -hmm. Strings and bling is going to go number three. Nah, you bugging. Listen to I me. I ain't accepting that one. You listen bugging. to me. I know it's your opinion, but you bugging. Yeah. And I'm only putting it there because mm -hmm. I, I need to put the other one above it. So okay. I have no now, reason let me, why. Let me hear your reason. I have no, no negatives. I'm not going to say the reason why I, no, okay. let me just let's place it at number three for now. Mm -hmm. Number two, bad hair, because of what it did mm -hmm. to the culture, to the kids, the movement. Yo, if you were there, you would have seen that shit. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff we got to capture because I had a, a very close homie who was taking videos of everything. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people saw that, the frenzies and all that kind of stuff. How it connected, just the the. The breath of fresh air that it was, do you understand? Uh, and and I think where I was in my career it was like, yo, I felt like I was in a dream state the entire time. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember most of those moments, really, mm -hmm. truthfully and honestly. Mm -hmm. I was faded the whole mm -hmm. time. Oh, for real? What? <laughs> <laughs> so that moment was crazy, and and like going from not having to that was like it was wild. Everyone, yeah. everyone from my life pre-fame mm -hmm. that I brought onto that, even if it's just like, yo, come to the club with me one night. Mm -hmm. Are you in Joburg? Come hang out mm -hmm. just so you can see. Mm -hmm. Even they are like, what the fuck, bro? Mm -hmm. What is this life? Mm -hmm. What Like, you have these people praising you, literally grabbing your legs and knees mm -hmm. and fucking, like, you know, you're not used to that kind of stuff. You yeah. see it on TV, but yeah. you think, ah, that's, yeah. they're acting, you yeah. know, or whatever. But like, when that started happening in real life, it was like, it was crazy. <clears throat> so, I see your reasoning. You understand? I, it's more of an emotional thing. It's, yeah, it's yeah, an emotional so thing. For, for it's you, it's like it's my it's like, first album. You understand? It's like a first born. You so understand? I see that. You know? But it's, I, it's more about the moments I'm gonna around keep it. it. It's more about the moments yeah, around yeah, it. That's what I'm saying. I'm Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more about the moments around <laughs> it yeah, than you. the music. Yeah. Obviously, Strings, Strings and Blings is a better album sonically. Yeah. Do you understand? But yeah. these are my babies, so I have to, you understand? I feel you. And then obviously I put, uh, I put, I put, I love your head number one. I love your head. Are number you saying one. that because it's your new album? Nah. Nah, nah, nah. I said this before when I, when I was still working on it. Mm -hmm. I said it in the album. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never been this intentional about the way I write stuff, the way my songs are produced. Uh, bro, just being in studio with, with actual musicians who actually play instruments it's like mm -hmm. yo i want this feeling dog let's go in there let's figure this thing out i want it to sound like this i wanted to give you this feeling even some of the beats that i got i was like i'm not happy with how this beat ends let's go back in the lab let's let's change it i need it to make you feel like something you understand it's not this is not me trying to say oh look i can do these flows again or i can rap this fast again or mm -hmm. i can you know make this turn up song again 
It's, it's, it's and, not about uh, that. Like you were intentional, and we felt that too. Cause yeah. on this album, I don't feel you competing. I don't feel no, um, no. you trying to. I mean, even on a record with Benny, Benny the Butcher, I expected like a record that was like hard. Boom bap, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But when I when I heard that a beautiful yeah. record, you yeah. know, um, I was like, nah, the boy is just making music. Yeah. Um, with you even saying you were just trying to be, you know what I'm saying, speaking your stories and not just trying to out rap niggas. Yeah. Um, are you feeling that you're at that moment in your life where you are not seeing anybody as competition? Definitely not. I'd be dumb to say that. There's, there's definitely better rappers out there than me. But you know what? I, I, I will always put up, pull, uh, put up a fight. Do you feel there's better rappers than you in the SA? No. But there could be some guy in the cut was really disgusting okay. with it. I just haven't met him. Anyone that I've met. So are you saying can, Nasty C is the best rapper in South Africa? I'm not saying I'm the best rapper in South Africa, but I don't see anyone who can really like make me go, yo, I, you know what? No, let me take this L. Nah, if you, what? We, you, you can write, I can write. I, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Okay. And this is not only in South Africa, dog. This is also in, in, in the world, Africa, period. dog. I in the world, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but Who you feel giving you the smoke in the world? In the world, because of where I am right now, mm -hmm. with the way I write, I have to say J. Cole, and I have to say Jay-Z. Those Respect two guys. the gods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dog. The, the, way write, yeah. the way they write, the way they write is insane, dog. It's mm -hmm. like, it's never been so direct, but mm -hmm. at the same time, so colorful and multi-layered. And multi mm -hmm. It's like, it's insane. It's mm -hmm. like, you understand, as a, as a basic person who doesn't, who's not like a hip-hop head, mm -hmm. you understand what this guy's saying, and you mm -hmm. feel it, and you mm -hmm. relate. But also as a hip hop head, you're like, what the? The other fuck? people Did might not get the say? triple and Do you they, understand? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, those guys, yo. So, Nasty C's competition Eminem, is J. Cole and Hov. J. Cole, Hov, Eminem. Uh, I mean, obviously, Kendrick, obviously, Drake, too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, man. You yeah, know, there's a lot. There's a lot. I don't want to be that guy who just acts like oh, I'm the best in the world. Nah. But you know what? I, I, I will say this, though. Mm -hmm. If you put me in a room with any one of these people, and you and you said to make a song, even if it's like okay, you make a song, I make a song. I'm not gonna make a. I'm not. We're not gonna come out of that room like ah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. This guy's song is way better. No, that's not gonna be the case. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put up a fight. Do you understand? I'm gonna I like put up the, a fight the entire. I don't care what kind of song mm -hmm. we're making. If we're if we're barring out, mm -hmm. I can bar out. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're making a melodic song, I got you. Do you understand? It's easy. Do you understand? And if it's like if we if we're making. I don't care. We can experiment. We can make a pop song. I'm there. I was I was saying this before we even shot the interview. Yeah. Um, I think you're the most well-rounded rapper yeah. in the country. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, thanks, you could do anything when it comes to hip hop. Yeah. Thanks, man. And it's refreshing from a young guy like you too. Mm. Um, yeah, man. You saying like obviously you don't think you have competition, but there's someone in this country. People always put you against him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I don't know if you guys came up around the same time, or uh, I mean, every, everybody knows this A Reese, obviously. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have a beef or is competition. You I'll know be honest, maybe you, even yeah. even me, I don't know what that thing is. So I call For it. Real. It's petty spaghetti. So it's kind of a little bit. it's like it's complicated. It's like a misunderstanding, but it's also fucking dumb. It's it's. I've heard it's you address stupid. it on the record. Yeah, it's it's stupid, stupid. Because when we when we cross why, paths, why 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 are you calling it stupid? Because we don't even know what started it. You understand? Mm -hmm. We don't we don't we don't know what started this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He doesn't know. It's like why is most beefs like that? Even like media the cast, media the media and, 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 and and AKA shit. Like I I spoke to AKA so many times. Like I don't know why we beefing. But you know what though? Yeah. With them, at least it was shots taken. It was like it was some real disrespect in there. Yeah. You understand? So it was like, all right, even if we don't know what started it, you've now said this about me. I can't, I can't let that go. Mm -hmm. With us, it's not even that. Mm -hmm. Like these weird subliminals, mm -hmm. where it's like, all right, if you catch it, you catch it. But it's like, it's not, <laughs> it's not even really there. Yeah, it's some weird shit, man. But you know what? It's like, it is what it is. I, it's like what I, guys what I said on that other? song. You never bump not, into Not so often these days. Uh, that used to be the case when pre-COVID. Yeah, that used to be the case. And then if you see each other, like what what is the energy? Just like I said, nothing happens. You it's just, not even like a bump of a shoulder or nothing. It's just like, all right, I'm here, you're here, all right, whatever. 
we just do my thing, do your thing. Sometimes they'll even be like, yo, what's up? I right, okay, oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, dap it up and shit. Yeah, it's it's like I tell you, it's the weirdest thing ever. So it's why weird. don't why don't you niggas just speak about it then if that's the case? If it's nothing. You see, yeah. the the one of the reasons why I'm not so open to that anymore. I'm open to like laying it to rest or whatever, but I'm not gonna waste my time trying to just have a sit down, a conversation, nothing like that. It's just not worth my time anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reason why is that I've I've tried to do that multiple times. For real? Yeah, I've tried to do that. I even I even booked a guy at my at my Iverson tour one of the years. I think it was twenty. Oh, I remember. I was like seventeen there. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I booked him for that. I was like, yo, I DM'd him. I was like, yo, listen, this is dumb. This 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 fucking just you know, yeah. put this thing to rest. We don't even know what the fuck this thing is. Mm -hmm. Come to my show. This will go crazy. People will fucking wild out. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a beautiful moment for hip hop. It's like yeah, let's do it. I'm down. And then uh, I think he pulls up super 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 fucking late and wants to go on after me. I'm like you're fucking crazy. This is my show. You're not gonna close my show. Are you out of your mind? Mm. You understand? So mm -hmm. it's like to me, I took that as as a sign of disrespect. So I was like, all right, you know what? That settles it. That's that shows me your true intentions. Because mm -hmm. right now, I'm like, yo, I'm not even going to be a rapper with you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like, my words are cool. I'm like, okay, I talk to the type of vibe. But it's like, if if there's nothing, <laughs> let's just fucking work, man. Let's make some money, dog. Mm -hmm. You understand? And and that wasn't the case with him. So I was like, all right, okay, I suck. It's like, it is what it is, you know? And then, like I said on that song, it's like, yo, wherever we go from now on, it's fine. Fuck it. I'm not going to try and be the bigger person and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Thanks. Suck. It's like, I don't care anymore. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. You and know, for the fact that it's like, about nothing is crazy. That's what I'm to me. saying. It's like it's some petty stuff. And I like shit. both of y'all niggas, man. It's like, like you know, yeah. if you could just fucking grow up mm -hmm. and just, you know. But it's like, yo, it is what it is, man. It's like it's the the weird things that come with this thing, this 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 industry. It's like a lot of people don't even really think for themselves. It's it's their squads or people or it's what they see in the headlines mm -hmm. or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Okay, as, in, as opposed to going, nah, fuck it. Let me just go to this guy. Do you think maybe it's necessary in hip hop because that competition is always like? Do you get like? Do you feel like the he fuck keeps? Out of here. Nah. I, yeah, nah. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Hey, talk with people at the end of the day. If it's my good to bed, something's going on between me and you. Yeah. My spawn on up so something's gonna happen. We're gonna talk about it uh -huh. or whatever, or corners or also disrespect someone. Uh -huh. Something's gonna happen though, you understand? Uh -huh. If there's nothing going on, then there's gonna be this weird thing of just like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. And then you go back to your corner and you look at me, you look that way. It's like it's weird, dog. It's weird, dog. I'm not I'm not wearing a costume anymore. If it's like, oh I'm a rapper, this is what mm -hmm. rappers do. Fuck that. I'm in my skin. You understand? I I'm me, dog. You know, we could be rappers when it's time to be on stage and in front of the camera and stuff. But off camera, I'm me, dog. I'm not going to pay any any of this petty shit attention like that. It's, just, it's not worth it. I see. It's not worth it. Nasty don't give a fuck no more. I dog. I it's, it's over with. Man, I son, boy. I'm focused <laughs> on my family. Like, fuck out of this, this explains the situation. Maybe you could give us a little bit of clarity. Yeah. Like, with you talking all the smoke shit, it takes me to, like, two weeks ago, I'm chilling. We watching the rugby, South Africa's winning and shit. My homeboy just keeps me, yo, you see Nasty just smack something going, like, what? Nasty hit <laughs> some guy on stage. No uh, ways. Like, yeah. I see the footage because you've never, like, given off that energy that you are that type of individual. Yeah, I'm all. not a hostile person. Exactly. And I heard um, some interview, someone was asking you, like, yo, there's these fights with Casper going on. Would you step in the ring and fight Aries? Yeah, and and like, you were like, nah, I'm not that type of individual. Yeah, I'm not, though. So what happened on that day that you ended up smacking that guy, home buddy? That guy startled me, dog. I'm not going to lie. And I, I really wish it didn't happen that way. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If that guy sees this, yo, dog, I apologize, man. And to be honest with you, that punch didn't even really connect. No, I did. You lied. It did not. Now you're capping it. <laughs> Trust did. me, it did not. <laughs> it did it. you know? But I was like, yo, in the moment, it's like, yo, dog, I'm thinking of all these things. I'm like, I'm nervous as fuck. I'm wearing shades. I can't really see much. It's like, uh -huh. I usually do, I don't like to wear shades. But I wear shades like the first song. You understand? Because okay. the nerves are fucking me up bad. You understand? Uh -huh. So I'm getting up there. I'm performing a brand new song. No one's heard this thing. Uh -huh. the song is about homies. Oh, that was that the first record even. Yeah. yeah. First song. You uh -huh. understand? So it's like, there's also, that's just like, it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Come on, dog. I'm, I'm trying to put on a show here. It's my first yeah. song. Also, it's a song about people that we've lost. A song that's inspired by AKA, who just got mm -hmm. ran up on and fucking done like that. You mm -hmm. understand? It's all these emotions, dog. Just fucking. You understand? And mm -hmm. I'm getting up there on stage trying to trying to put on a show. 
and I'm looking this way, I'm performing, all of a sudden, it's like all these lights that are facing me, you just fucking pop up with your hands up. Like, I don't know what's happening, mm -hmm. though. You understand? And it's like, maybe it's because I see a lot of these videos where, where rappers just get dumb dirty. It's people just don't respect rappers. People mm -hmm. just think we're clowns, so they can just run up on us and do whatever mm -hmm. and just get their little clout and be on their way. Mm -hmm. It's like, I wasn't having that that day. It was just, just bad timing, man. You know? And when I, if you look at the video, I pushed him away and then he came back. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And that's what prompted the, the swing. But it didn't connect and I'm glad it didn't. Bro, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people think I out. Oh, Yo, man. No, nah, I didn't connect. I'm Denzel, did, right that here. place didn't connect. It didn't. From even, the angle, he, even he even moved for the leg. From, from the angle, he even kicked the homie too. From the angle, it looked like it did, but it didn't. I'm gonna be honest mm -hmm. with you, man. It, it it it's not one of my proudest moments. I don't I don't like that that happened like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I I'm not gonna shy away from. You understand? Like. Bucking back if, mm -hmm. if if something like that ever happens again. Because you can't just disrespect me like that. Facts. Dog, you understand? At the end mm -hmm. of the day, I'm a man, dog. Mm -hmm. You know? And I have all these paranoids and stuff like that. And people to take care of, myself to take care of. So I'm not just going to let anything fly, dog. We're not in America here. We can just jump on and we can wild out. You can jump back in the crowd. Let's mm -hmm. not let's not do that. Nah, facts. Let's, let's have some boundaries and respect each other. You know? Your place is there. You, you pay the ticket. that mm -hmm. You stay there. You understand? Let me stay up here. Let me put on a show for you. Just keep it sweet. Let's go home nicely. I'm not going to cap. I like seeing that. Yeah, man. You I like seeing what? <laughs> that video? <laughs> Yo, man. Like, that you niggas like drama, man. <laughs> nah, it's not even about that. Like, bro. <laughs> like, I'm going to keep it real, bro. Like, yeah. uh, seeing it, like, just from a rapper's point of view and a man's point of view, yeah. I just like you standing on your shit. Yeah. You know? It made me look at you in a different light. Like, nah. Yeah. It's, it's, that's the thing, though. It's like what I said. People, people look at us entertainers I'm not even just gonna say just rappers but mm -hmm. entertainers people mm -hmm. look at us and think we're these clowns which is mm -hmm. you know oh this guy hides behind security and mm -hmm. this and that it's like yo say if it's I, call it, it's, I had a life pre-fame facts what do you think was happening then facts do you understand who do you think was fighting for me then oh Don't so nasty been fighting I haven't been fighting <laughs> uh, I'm not a bitch dog uh-huh yeah mm -hmm. dog it's like uh you I'm, not are, a, I'm not a hostile guy at mm -hmm. all. I'm not a guy that'll start a fight. You never mm -hmm. see me start a fight. I'll never start a fight. Mm -hmm. But if you if you bring one to me, like you know, like I'm gonna you... weigh my options. Be like, okay, all right, let's go. <laughs> you know, obviously if it's bigger than me, all right, I'm gonna call blessing. Say blessing. What's that? Like? It's you know. But if I weigh my options, I'm like, all right, nah, come I on. I can take this thing. Yeah, what? Yeah. Uh, especially if there's cameras rolling crazy. I'm not gonna do it like that. I'm not gonna do it like that, dog. You know, imagine my son growing up, he's watching his dad get knocked out on stage. Holy shit. Oh, man. Nah, bro. Nah, facts. Yeah. Especially because you were like, uh, you got a little smaller frame. Niggas would just try and think they can do you understand? style on you. And I'm a goofy yeah. nigga online, too. Yeah. You understand? I yeah. make all these sweet songs. My album is titled I Love It Here. But niggas look at me and think this nigga's sweet. <laughs> You know, niggas look at me and think, dog. You know, it was nah, like, I feel hey. you. Right. Um, you also speaking like when you were like when that incident happened. Yeah. Uh, you were making a dedication track, uh, to AKA. Yeah. Um, I want you to speak on the relationship with AKA. Yeah. Um, man. like I was very close to Keenan, and mm. he used to tell me what he thinks of you a lot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Before you guys actually even did the record. Yeah. Um, cause a lot of people don't know, lemons and lemonade was like. It was just AKA it was supposed to be just an AKA record for a while. Yeah. You know? I didn't um, even know that. Excuse me? I said I didn't even know that. For real. No, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. And then he just felt like it was missing something. Mm. You know? And he was like, nah, you know, let me just highlight the boy. Cause he'd always say, like, obviously you guys are not as close, but he yeah. admired you yeah. in terms of your talent skill. Yeah. And he was like, nah. I need to get one in with the homie, you know, and it's crazy that he picked that one for me. I know, yeah. I, yo, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, I'm so humbled that you thought for a second in your mind that I would kill that song. Uh -huh. What? Uh -huh. You know, but I'm glad he did, man. I'm I'm so fucking glad he did. I'm so glad he did. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, we bro. spoke. We, me and AKA actually spoke about this on the very first episode of the LT the podcast. Yeah. We said your verse on lemons and lemonade. Was verse of the year. Oh shit! You know, no, verse of the up. year, and he's shut saying up. that on a song where he's got a verse. Mm. No, shut on his song. And you know what I'm saying. And 
like that pocket that you channeled on that song yeah. specifically yeah. you know um why do you think so cuz i saw a clip of you saying yo man i've been doing these things you know i've been hitting niggas with mad bars you know i've been having mad flows but niggas fuck. don't catch it yeah but as soon as i say the best verse ever <laughs> what are you shitting me bro I think you think yeah yeah. I I I think it's mm -hmm. like it's like what we were saying earlier. Now mm -hmm. it's like yo, when you get just a bit more, just be direct. Mm -hmm. Have your flair and all that and mm -hmm. the swag and all that in mm -hmm. there, but like be direct. Mm -hmm. Understand? Let people understand exactly what you're saying. Off rip. Let people get it and feel it. That's to feel very organic and authentic and very. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's what I tried to do my best in that song there. And and it came across nicely, and it just connected. And I think that's why people gravitate to uh, towards it so much. You know what I mean? All these things are very you are life to learn to live. Mm -hmm. You know, pepper steak pies, all that kind of stuff. Bro. You know, no Bro. cool drink, SAPS, all that Bro. kind of stuff. You like, yo, every day we go to these things. You feel me? It's like, and like for me, it's like, like I I said to Keenan, I don't know if Nasty understands why South Africans actually gravitated to that verse, mm. like that. Yeah. It's obviously because of like the references. Mm, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 like the South African references yeah. on that record yeah. was crazy, bro. I had to, mm -hmm. I had to, I had to think a lot about like how guys like okay, my little cool cats, Ko, aka himself, mm -hmm. uh, Jr, mm -hmm. how they approach their verses. Mm -hmm. I had to think about that. When I was making that, that I mean, obviously I was lit, so I wasn't like calculating and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I was just vibing out, and I was like, yo, who would kill this song? I was mm -hmm. like, ah, okay, one, two, three. How do they approach this shit? How do they, how do they do it so well every single time? Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, they keep it, keep it here, boy. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool, all right. Then I did that. Were you surprised with the response? I was definitely. I was when I sent it to him. I thought it was gonna go. Ah, no, it's dope. And then when it comes out, I'm like, oh, it's my first. <laughs> yeah. Because that happened once, you know? Oh, for real? Yeah, on real stuff. Oh, yeah, they did tell me that story. Yeah, boy, you know? Shit, they did. Like, I'm not going to lie. I would have done the same thing. Before Mugs was on real stuff, yeah. they told me, like, in the was, beginning, it was... I would have done the same actually, thing, though. We actually breaking the story, because yeah. I forgot. Niggas did tell me the story. Yeah. This is like... Uh, um, this is like Nasty C first, uh, before you blew up, actually. Yeah. This is after Juice back. Yeah. Real stuff. Yeah, had Les, me uh, and um, AKA, yeah, and Nasty C. Yeah, before Mugs was on the record. Yeah, and obviously you were nervous because it's like nervous as fuck. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I come from making music by myself in mm -hmm. my study room at home, my comfort zone. You mm -hmm. Understand? It's just me. So I can I can get experimental. I can mm -hmm. take it to places where it's like I've never been there before. Let me try. It. Yeah, but when I'm in this. Big fucking studio with all these people that I'm only used to seeing on TV, mm -hmm. and I have to deliver under pressure like this. Mm -hmm. These niggas are literally looking through the glass like I'm in the booth, dog. They're looking through the glass <laughs> like this while I'm rapping. I'm like, yo, give me a, give me a second, dog. Let me fucking candle myself. Yeah. You know, but yeah. it's like, yo, I, all that pressure, dog. I, I I crumbled under that pressure, dog. Mm -hmm. I didn't fold. I crumbled for sure. I was mm -hmm. like, oh fuck, I need to write. What's the most impressive thing to do right now? Oh, punchlines. Let me just fucking. Mm -hmm. And go rap fast, and mm -hmm. I just I did that, and it just didn't connect. You know, they were Shit. kind enough not to let me know in the moment. Oh, for real? Yeah, in the moment they were like, "Yo, this is fucking fire! What? <laughs> this is dope! What? You're sick! You know, Liz? Yeah, fucking fire, baby! <laughs> you know? Talking about that, I have to sneak another one in. Yeah. Damn, like you and Liz got some crazy shit coming out. You, you heard it? Like, oh, God. fucking fire! No? Those records, fucking fire, Shit, bro. bro. Now we're vibing, dog. Yeah. I'm definitely in a in a way more comfortable space right now, dog. Mm -hmm. You know, way more comfortable, man. I'm not trying to fucking prove something every single time. I'm trying to yeah. prove something to the fans and not the people I'm in studio with. Facts. I think that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're proving something to the fans, it's like, all right, cool. Let me let me touch you here. Mm -hmm. You try to prove something to the people in the room, it's like, let me fuck you up here. Mm -hmm. That's that's not the right approach. Do you know what that tells me? It's like. I, I always tell kids, bro, when it's not your time, it's not your time. Like, yeah. you not being on um, real stuff at that time, I'm yeah. sure for you, was like, oh, man, I missed my opportunity. Yeah. There it goes. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nah, I, I'm not going to lie, man. I was expecting it. <laughs> I was expecting to get cut off that song. <laughs> what? 
They didn't even send me a copy to listen by myself. I already, oh, knew, I already knew what time it was, dog. I already knew, trust me. The fact that they didn't send me an MP3, I was like, yo, send me the MP3. So mm -hmm. like, I got you. What's your email? All right. Then nothing. But yeah, go ahead. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, yeah. For me, it's just a testament to say, like, bro, certain things, maybe they were not meant to be at that time. Yeah. You were supposed to blow up authentically by yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had a certain situation. I was supposed to be on, um, I, I never went to studio that day and we're supposed to do that record all together. Yeah. We on fire with Les mm. and Muggs. I was supposed to be on that record. Mm. And then I missed out on being on that record because I had to do something that day. Mm. And when that song came out, I was like, oh my God, mm. that mm. was my opportunity to blow up. It's That's all one of my favorites bro, right there too, though. Bro. Oh, hectic. And I can hear you on that one too, which is bro. crazy. <sighs> Shit. Damn. I was like, I love this I love this record, but You would have oh, went my... crazy on that song. Excuse me? You would have went crazy on dog, that song. Dog. Dog. Nah, you would have you would actually snapped. I cried tears. But then yes. I, I I think about it like bro, when it's not Damn. if it's your time, it'll come whenever it's supposed to come. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So but Every, everything in God's timing though. Facts. Yeah, man. Facts. Okay, so we broke down the, the structure of the album, right? Yeah. Four, three, two, one. Uh -huh. Um, I, just to close it off. Yeah. I need to say you bugging strings and bling is a. Damn. I, I think it is your certified classic. Yeah. Honestly, I want to see obviously how this new album's gonna age. Oh yeah. But I think it's a masterpiece. Honestly, yeah, I really think it's a masterpiece, bro. Is a, is a phenom like, phenomenal. And album, I'm so. amazed by your talent and. It, I, I feel it's important. Us rappers always have these egos. Like, if you give another man these props, you feel like it's taking something away from you. These but names. I want to tell you live on camera, bro. Yeah. I really think you like, amazing. And you're definitely you. my top five. Thank you, bro. Like, not just the new generation, period. And that's say hip hop. Thank you, bro. You Thank know you. what I'm saying? And this album shows how much of an artist you are just besides the rapping shit the mm. different pockets you went in yeah. I was thoroughly impressed like I think you wise beyond your age you Thank know what I'm saying man. the introspectiveness in the stories mm. exceptional so, you know what I'm saying no, so, the man. melodies exceptional the beat choice mm. exceptional you know what I'm saying ah, thanks, and um, I think we need to champion I mean on um, on the record with Benny um, I think Prosper in Peace yeah you speak about like how a lot of people um, don't want to give you, they be hating unnecessarily yeah. like you yeah. ain't put in the work yeah. for what you've done. And yeah, man. bro, you've been putting in that work and I feel like, bro, like we need to give credit whenever it's due, bro. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Niggas might have their politics and say, yo, this guy's like this, that, that. Nah, we need to give credit when it's due. Yeah, people think uh, giving a compliment to someone is automatically putting them way above you it's yeah. like oh you're better than me yeah. or whatever no that's not what it is though it's show love you know mm -hmm. but it is what it is though it's, that's his life why did you feel you had to write that record though uh one i didn't really i don't write it i don't think i wrote it i think it was just one of those sessions where it's like i right, just load up the first beat let's just let's just get this thing going mm -hmm. you know and that's the first song you're doing and you don't even pay it no mind actually you just move on and you do some other stuff but then that other stuff ends up being the shit that you just overthink too much. And yeah. and that one, that was organic yeah. and authentic, ended up being the one. So it was just one of those. I wasn't really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. We were just there. It was the first song of the session. And I was like, I, I like this beat. Let's just, let's just fucking do something. Let's mm -hmm. just start. You know? Yeah. So the people are hating on you. Mm. Do you think they have something valid? And what are they hating on? Does no one has anything valid that they can hate me for. I'm not a, I'm not an easy guy to hate. I'll be honest with you, especially especially after you meet me. If you hear if you hear how disrespectful I get in these songs, how ignorant I can get, maybe you can go. I miss Isaac Low and hey, hey, tell the fine. But then when you meet me, it's like, yo, this guy is actually a cool guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a very easy person to hate. Uh, but that's just how people are. This is how these niggas are wired. These niggas is weird. And it's, and it's niggas too. So <laughs> you think I give a fuck? Like what? It's no, it's no, it's no girls in my hate in my hate comments. For none, me. none, zero. Yeah. You understand? It's yeah. it's niggas though. But it's like yo, I under I I don't understand it, but I under I get it. You know, better ass niggas. Do your thing, dog. You know, do Getting what you must. No pussy. Do what you Getting must. But no money. I, I'm be honest. A lot of a lot of my haters are like they're these automatic auto autopilot haters because yeah. they're super fans of Reese. So yeah. it's like to them, it's like I picked the side, so I don't Shit. care. 
what you do or what you say or how good you get, mm-hmm. I'm on this side. Mm-hmm. So I can't show you love, which I don't know. I, That's crazy to me, bro. Yeah, I get it. I don't understand it. I get it. But it's all right, whatever. I feel like you and Reese can coexist. Like, yeah, you can like two we, people. We don't even have to be friends. Or yeah, we don't even like have to people. get on a song together I, I, yeah. or whatever. But I feel like we can be two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, it's whatever. It's like, I don't but like this culture that. does love competition and they love yeah. they love it when niggas are on opposite sides. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's one thing hip hop is really, really known for, to be honest. But hey, me, I don't care, dog. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and they keep making these albums, dog. Yeah. Living this life, you know. And talking about these albums, what is your favorite record on the album? My favorite record on the album. <sighs> See, it's tricky when you ask me because I made the album. So it's like, yeah. I'll give you reasons, different reasons why certain songs, in my opinion, are like fucking, you know what I mean? Like yeah, insane. break it down. So I'll give you uh, Broken Marriages. Oh. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. The picture that I paint on there, mm-hmm. I think is, is one that a lot of people can relate to. It's very honest. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, yo, just just playing with that idea of just like, yo, what what I've seen in relationships is wedding pictures taken off the wall, fucking rings going from fingers straight into the drawer mm-hmm. kind of shit. It's like, yo, that's raw, dog. Mm-hmm. That's like, we've seen that shit. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'd also say uh, uh, Dear Oliver, especially mm. because of the process too. Mm. Dear Oliver is a very special record. Mm-hmm. I did the first verse a month before he got here, mm-hmm. and okay, in between, so people might watch. They might know Oliver is nasty. Oh, Oliver! Yeah, Oliver yeah. is my son, mm-hmm. my new father. You see mm-hmm. the body, you feel me? Well, uh, what are you seeing in the body? Them kind of, dog. What are you talking about? The cheeks, the three necks, all of it. I embrace it. It is what it is, baby. <laughs> no, <Nah>, but <laughs> but the process. Nigga, you want to have you want to have a, de- a dead body so bad? I don't want to have it. I have it. <laughs> You can be ashamed of it or embrace it. Pick one. I right, pick to embrace it. Let's go. Uh, so, so dear Oliver is like this. The first verse is a month before he touched down, mm-hmm. and then in between the two verses is a, a sound bite of him actually coming onto like you know what I mean, like him being born, mm-hmm. like the delivery. Was that the real? Yes, the I took it from the video. I just, oh shit! Yeah, extracted the sound. That's him. That's crying crazy. For the first time, that's Sam crying. That's mm-hmm. the doctor saying congratulations. All that's that crazy. Stuff. And then second verse is a month after he got here. So when I end the first verse, I say, when I get to hold you, I'll come back to this mic and I'll tell you some more. Mm-hmm. So when he was born, took a month off, didn't do shit, didn't do shows, nothing. I was just spending time with him. You know? And then after that, I uh, went back into the studio and I was like, all right, I know what it feels like now to have you in my arms. Mm-hmm. I understand this love that I have for you now. You understand? I understand where it'll take me, the things that it can make me do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. So second verse, I, I speak more about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's just a beautiful story within itself. Outside of the song, it like the the lyricism in the song, mm-hmm. just the story of the making of that and just the real life events <laughs> that took place. Fucking amazing. There's a moment I'll never forget ever in my life. Damn. So yeah. what was happening when your son was born? Like, were you, like, did they Oof, call you from somewhere? Boy, was that panic scary, situation? Boy, <laughs> what? I think uh, because we had already hit the nine month mark and we were like a couple weeks into it, maybe two, mm-hmm. three, mm-hmm. we were already like, yo, any minute now, it's mm-hmm. like, it can go down. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So be ready. Have the diaper bag ready. Have all these things ready, you know? And then this one day we we're like, all right, let's. Let's just take some pictures. She's like, oh, I want to take some pictures in the tub or whatever. It's like, all right, let's go in the tub, taking pictures. Uh, she's like, yo, I'm not feeling too good. Yo, know, there's a pain. And then she has a contraction. Then she has another one. Then she has another one. Then she has another one. And it's like, she, she's she got this app that can time these contractions and how far apart they are. And we're looking at it. It's like, yo, this is, this is like 15 contractions. What's Damn. It? He's coming. This man yeah. is on the way right now. And then, so I tell my brother, we get in the car. We go to the, the place, the birth center. This lovely lady there, our midwife, she's been communicating with us the entire time, even throughout the night, throughout the contractions. Mm-hmm. I'm calling her, I'm like, yo, this is the, the seventh one now. What's mm-hmm. happening? What mm-hmm. Should I come there now? She's like, mm-hmm. relax. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when we finally make it there, she she has an emergency of her own with her daughter. But she's like, yo, I'm there. Trust me, I'm coming. Mm-hmm. Shout out to her, man. She's amazing. So she gets there. Uh, 
all right, she's, she's showing me how to do the massages and stuff like that and how to just, like, take care of the situation, make sure she understands I'm there with her in this pain or whatever. Don't let her fall asleep, all these things. Uh, all that kind of stuff happens. And then they, they do these scans uh, where they kind of just monitor the contractions. And they're like, yo, this is not normal. He's ready to come out, but he can't come out. Huh? Something's happening. And you look like you're ready. All the signs you've been showing look like you're ready. You, the things, the pains you're telling me about, the you know, the, the change in the hips and the whatever. It's like, you, you know what I mean? You're ready, but like, he can't come out. Something's happening. Something's wrong. That's when the fucking fear kicks in, boy. That's Damn. when, like, holy fuck. Mm -hmm. You know? Because I hear so many stories about you lose a baby, you can lose the mother, you can lose both of them at the mm -hmm. same time. Man, I'm thinking, Fuck, boy, you know? Mm -hmm. Already I'm feeling like I'm not worthy of this, you know? How did God pick me to be a parent? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ah, oh, this is not happening for me, is it? Mm -hmm. All right, but but luckily, man, the grace of God, they, they, they figure it out. They figure out what's wrong. They're like, all right, we're going to have to, we're going to have to go straight into the cesarean right now. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, all right, cool, let's prep. Like, do the preps, whatever. Ah, 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 we're over there. She's taking it like a champ. I'm cracking jokes. She's laughing. We're dancing, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Just powering through it. We get to the theater. They administer the what, what, the anesthesia, all that shit. She lays down. But the whole time, I'm scared shitless, boy. I'm trying to be like, you know, I'm, I'm being what she needs me to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm being strong for her, being mm -hmm. supportive. You got this. What? This is nothing. Mm. Playing her favorite songs, rubbing her hair, rubbing her hands, and being super supportive. In the back of my mind, I'm scared as fuck, though. Mm. You know what I mean? She's, as she's talking to me, her eyes are fucking, she's like falling asleep a little bit, keeping her up, all that kind of stuff. Um, the anesthesia is like kicking in really, like really fast, too. And it's, mm -hmm. this is like almost peak winter, so it's cold as shit, and she's shaking and shit like that, trembling. Bro, scary as fuck, though. That's your first son, Fucking bro. scary, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, so, all right, they put up the screen, whatever, we're behind the screen, I'm comforting her, doing what I need to do, and, and they operate, they get him out, saw her back up, and I know I wasn't supposed to be listening, bro, but I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm eavesdropping. I need to hear what the fuck they're saying back there, because I can't see. There's like this green sheet up. I can't mm -hmm. see shit. Talking about... The, the the blood, um, so all the blood that, like the excess blood, they collect it, no? Mm -hmm. And I guess they usually tell the patients, oh, this is how much blood you lost. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember whether they said gallons or liters. I'm pretty sure they said liters. We are in South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there was, the, one, of the, one of the doctors was like, it's usually three. And the other guy's like, nah, it's six. I'm like, what the fuck? Damn. You know? So I'm yeah. like, I'm panicking, bro. Yeah. You understand? But like, I'm not showing. It. All right. And then as soon as as soon as our midwife comes back around, um, she's like, everything is fine. I I now I know it's fine because she's saying it without the camera rolling mm -hmm. and everything. She's talking to me now. She's not even talking to Sam. She's like, just mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing. You're doing amazing. Mm -hmm. But everything is fine. Everything is cool. Baby's healthy. Sam is fine. Just we'll, we'll we'll get you guys up just now. Just let us do our thing for now. Mm -hmm. You go that side and go see your baby. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I go there, I see him for the first time, bro. I just couldn't stop crying, man. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm putting a nappy on him. I'm crying at the same time, bro. Cutting the umbilical cord, all that shit. It's like, crazy. it's a crazy fucking moment, man. I'll yeah. never forget that moment, bro. I'll never forget it, man. It was insane, though. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Rappers do cry, too. You know, hey, bro. We got emotions, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah I be thinking rappers rap. are robots, you know what I mean? Yeah, fucking hard. Fucking, uh, what up, my man? You know what I'm saying? Nah, B. Nah, yeah. that's, 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 that's dope. And I, I think it also, you know, we need to champion more fathers being in their kids' lives. Yeah. Um, most, most, most kids grew up without their dads in their lives. But I think... We we seeing a little bit of a change that's happening recently, yeah. you know. But yeah. obviously for you it's like the opposite. You grew up with your dad. Yeah, not my mother. It's like uh, there's a, there's a lot of positive things that are happening right now within this generation. As like fucked what? up as this generation is. Tell me, I can't. I don't, I don't know. know. Am I part of this generation? This generation Holy is shit. fucked up. Nah, it's fucked me up. Why. Many reasons. <laughs> the priorities all the way screwed up. Yeah. Backwards. Fucking. You don't just worry Tell about the positives. It would be nice to talk the about positives. Positives. Yeah. Is like. They're very into health and just like that's true. Young, 
successful gym, fly yeah. shit. You understand? That's, I'm in the gym all the time. Look at me. I got a Benz at 18. True. You that's understand? True. That that's shit true. is fire, that's bro. That's true. I love it, man. And like this mental health thing is, is real. You feel Facts. me? It's like they, they're in there, dog. 20 years ago, there was no mental health. None of it. If oh, you're going through it, you're cool. Now, now, you know? I like, can take what, it a bit overboard sometimes with these words, though. I'm triggered. Gaslighting. Anxiety. Oh, yeah, yeah, anxiety. But you understand? <laughs> the, the fact that they know those things and, <laughs> and they're able to identify which you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. feeling insecure. I'm getting an anxiety attack. I feel like this. I yeah. feel like that. And so we really led with love see. first. We led with love, positivity. Yeah. What What's, what's negative about this generation? <sighs> I, it's like, it, these things are not very easy to, I mean, some of them are easy to pick I can start with one. Like the cloud chasing, uh, just the whole thing of being, being lazy and, and thinking that success comes like this, you understand? People see someone Instant else do something and they think that can just take your blueprint and I automatically deserve to be up here too, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, no, it doesn't work like that. Uh, you have to put in the work. They they A lot of them can't take L's, mm -hmm. you know? L's is a, 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 they are a part of life. You're supposed it to be able to take... Bro. Yeah, bro, you're supposed Anyone to be able to take L's. Anyone that never took no loss... Doesn't yeah, have you know, wisdom at all. Some of these kids can't take L's, boy. Mm -hmm. It's like one, two L's and they give up instantly. Mm -hmm. Or they it drives them to an extreme of mm -hmm. some sort. You know? Just mm -hmm. that. The, I think the thick skin, I, I should just say. Mm -hmm. They lack that, a lot of them. Uh, and also just like basic manners, man, and respect and fucking being polite and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Then there's no value in that now. Niggas run up on you with a camera. So how you feeling about today? <laughs> what the fuck? Get out of my face, man. What are you doing though? Yeah, like yeah. I have that problem a lot. And now like my bodyguard now, he he does that for me, but in the beginning, I had to fucking do it myself. People just run up on me. Can I have a picture? I'm like, hey, you don't just run up on a stranger. My nigga throwing a life flex out. just like that. My bodyguard. This is as it's not normal. You say, <laughs> yo, my bodyguard. You yeah, know? Dog, but like you know, basic why, stuff why like that. Why? Why do you have a bodyguard? I need to be protected. From who? Uh, people that might not like me or people that mean harm to me. I'm a, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a person, of a certain status and. I have Talk a lot of value, it. and mm -hmm. most of the times I have very valuable things on me, so you never know who might come for me. Nice. might not even be a person who knows who I am, but they might just see me and be like, hey, one, two, three, yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I might mm -hmm. look like a meal to them, so I need, I need someone to... But also, sometimes fans can be a little overwhelming, you know? They might just run up on you and be like, yo, come on, you can't just, you know? But like, yeah, as I was saying, like, I, I have to stop a lot of people from just running up on me with a camera especially if i have time if i don't have time and it's like yo it's a pressing what do i just like from the airport to the bus to the plane it's like mm -hmm. all right cool run up on me with the camera it's fine just take a selfie i ah, sure whatever mm -hmm. but if it's like yo we're chilling i don't just run up on me with a camera dog like greet me i'm a human being at first you know mm -hmm. what I mean? just say oh how much i it's sure can i take a picture yes let's do mm -hmm. it do you understand especially if it's an adult i get even more disappointed and more upset when it's an adult Damn. coming at me like that mm. yo nasty see with a camera in my face <laughs> so it's like except it's i push i don't think later but delete that video it's cool with me i think let's take the video yo, have you niggas realized when nasty c puts on some authority it changes to Zulu, you know? Nah, like, 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 like. <laughs> whenever he's bringing his smoke, he switches up. It's never in English. Yeah, the accent is very hard to take seriously to these people. They don't, they don't take hey, me seriously bro, when I speak like this. Hey, bro, please get the camera on my face. <laughs> they say, dog, and, and they go like this when I speak like this. Some people literally start moving when I speak. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? You know? But yeah. like, yeah, I have to switch it up, man. And be like, yo, listen. I've seen you on the internet. You are just one of the things that you are not comfortable with, yeah. um, some of the things you had insecurities about. Because yeah. when we look at the internet, like I've spoken about this on this podcast, yeah. everybody on the internet shows only the beautiful shit. Yeah. Yeah. People only show them in the club with drinks. Yeah. They never show us the other side. You know what I'm, I'm saying? starting to be the guy that only shows the other nah, side. Nah, that is fucking dope. <laughs> not for real though. To be honest. That's what, I, I think that's why... Niggas are tattooing your name and like yeah. uh, uh, having yeah. that love for you. Because I told you, even with these artists like M and Hove, like the artists that are actually so transparent, yeah. you actually gravitate to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it took me to that moment where you had your insecurity and you went on the internet and say, hey guys, you might have your insecurity, but yo, I'm taking off my shoes. I'm mm. showing you this is something that I'm, insecurity, I'm, I'm insecure about. Mm -hmm. Um. This is a thing, and it's like it's a small thing when you think about it. Yeah, it's a very small thing. Yeah, but 
yo, I feel like maybe my toes are not correct right now. Yeah. Based on what um, they're supposed to look, look like, like yeah. in in human form. Yeah. And it's an insecurity you've lived with all your yo, life. The the but res- that step was fucking brave, bro. The response from that, I was expecting, I was expecting so much more. When people were just like, oh, okay. I was like, what? Yeah. Well, I thought that video was gonna be like viral. I thought I thought it was people, viral. But in a good way. Not as far as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a thing where it's like I could people wouldn't even make eye contact with me anymore. They'll just be looking down there. It's like, yo, what's what's happening down there? You know what I mean? But it wasn't even that though. People were just like, okay, whatever. It's like we see these things every day. It's like in the neighborhood at home, I have a brother who's like this, I have a sister who's like this, I have that. It's like whatever. But so I know care. why people took it like that. Yeah. Like it really honestly, it really showed your bravery, bro. You didn't yeah. have to do shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You are making like the next person feel like Bro, yeah. we are all not perfect. Yeah. And and I feel in this world, we, the people in the lab, like, need to champion shit that we are not perfect. Mm. You know, I thought, like, just to give you another example, like, Jay-Z and Beyonce. I thought they had the most perfect relationship and yeah. until we see that elevator shit with Solange. And I'm like, that, is not, I, that was supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. We need to show the world, like, ain't, ain't shit perfect out here, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. And that was, like... That was a that was a big moment for me too, man. I think that's when that's like a life changing moment for me right there, cause that was like the one thing that was holding me back from doing so many things. Like it was mm-hmm. it was bro, it was holding me back. That was like I I was held prisoner, bro. You know what I mean by the fact that I was different from mm-hmm. from other people in a very st- stupid way, bro. It's yeah. like you know what I mean. And for the longest of time, like my siblings and stuff were always like, "Yo, that's a gift, though. That's like you're mm-hmm. special." I was like, "Fuck." That I'm not special. I'm a freak, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, it just it helped me back from so many things I wanted to do, man. I think I think one of the reasons why I I, I like I'm I'm not a good swimmer is because I was like I'm not taking my shoes off. Are you crazy? No, you black. This one. <laughs> that's one of the that, yeah. That's one of the big factors for sure. But like, yeah. yeah but like I was I wasn't doing that. I was like, nah, you crazy. All these mm. people are look at my toe and shit. No, get out of here. Can you swim now? I'm trying. I, I took I took some swimming lessons in LA when I was there for a bit. But when I got home, I don't have a pool in my house, so I was like, ah, I'm not gonna go swim with a bunch of strangers. They're just gonna <laughs> stare at me because of who I am. Yeah, that's gonna be awkward. Yeah. I was over there taking swimming lessons with like old people. Oh, for real? Okay, <laughs> mothers and grandmothers and shit like that. They're just over there like, oh, you're doing so well, baby. <laughs> Why are you even here? I'm like, I don't know how to swim. I was like, yeah. It was fun though. It was nice really, dope. yeah. It was really cool. I really like being outside, man. Especially like out and about, doing yeah. like normal everyday people shit. Yeah. There's no one really knows I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I could just do whatever. I could just, you know, go take a swimming lesson and fuck it. Okay. Yeah, before you know. we wrap this shit up, talking about even that side. I mean, Nasty C, you've been intentional about being um, a worldwide brand. Yeah. We all know your uh, limitations are not just based <clears> in SA. <throat> yeah. Um, you want to be a worldwide superstar and I feel like you have yeah. all the skill set to be that. Mm-hmm. Uh do you still feel is that still your main mission? Nasty C to oh, yeah. be an international yeah, superstar. Global, global yeah. superstar, yeah for yeah. sure, hundred percent. That's why we're still taking these trips, you know? Facts. Taking these most of these trips. I guess that's another piece of advice. This could, this could double up as like a piece of advice mm-hmm. to not only the up and coming artists, but also artists that are established here in mm-hmm. SA. You gotta understand it's like uh African hip hop is not the sexiest thing in the world right now. So don't just sit here and think that you're gonna get all these bookings from out the continent. Mm-hmm. Sometimes even out the country. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You have to make it happen by yourself. So a lot of these trips we're taking Please don't be mistaken. Some of them not even getting paid for them. This is out of my own pocket. Fucking trying to go out there and, and spread the word and, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean? Build mm-hmm. awareness and all that kind of stuff. I'm investing in myself. So it's like, be be willing to make those kind of leaps of faith, you know? Mm-hmm. Fucking go to Atlanta and connect. Mm-hmm. Go to LA and connect. You know? Talking about trips, you are currently on a tour right now. Yeah. Um, The Africa Throne Tour. Yes, sir. With Casper and your verse. Yeah. Um, how how has the tour been, especially you uh, collaborating with another rapper to go on yeah. tour together? It's been amazing, man. For real. Yeah, it's been how amazing. How are you putting up with Casper all these tours? Like, like, you like right his there? personality? Yeah, you right. He's not, dog, he's, he's a very funny guy. 
Uh-huh. At first, I thought, oh, this is going to be cheeky. I'm going to have to... I have to get over my social anxiety a bit and uh-huh. fucking be talkative. I don't have to at all. Like yeah. we're all different in the mm-hmm. squad. In the two squads combined, we're mm-hmm. one big squad, and we're all different. But we all bring something to the table. It's like mm-hmm. it's 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 so much fun, dog. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun, man. Everyone is just hilarious. It's just good vibes all mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. I mean, we 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 perform so much, and then we know our shit. So that's not even like the biggest thing. Mm-hmm about this thing it's like yo we're prepared yeah. anyways so the show will come when the show comes we're yeah. prepared we're ready yeah. we're gonna give the people a good time guaranteed but in the times in between the, the amount of laughter and fun that's being had is is absurd man it's that's like I'm, I'm really getting to know who Casper is also just as a person what kind of person he is you know mm-hmm. what I mean cause I was I was one of those people who was like I've always been a fan of him from like uh, uh, was it primary school or high school high school high school yeah. days and into like my come up mm-hmm but I never really got to hang around him that much. Mm-hmm. So all I know of him really is like the clips he posts and the the, the music videos and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know? So even though I can kind of paint a picture in my mind from like our encounters and stuff like that, I didn't really know who he was. And then now we're really just like chopping it up and mm-hmm. just like talking about serious shit, bullshit sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. That's what's up. Oh, man, my people are telling me time is cutting us. I wanted to do like a five-hour pod with Nasty, yeah, um, get into some gaming shit, you know what I'm saying? See, one of these days, someone's going to come up here and ask you a bunch of questions. I have some questions for you, but nah, we're going to yeah, save yeah. that for another day. <laughs> huh? Oh, you motherfuckers be telling me in like five minutes. Oh, was it load shedding? Hey, yeah, out, you boy. guys are telling me time, and I don't even know what the fuck the time is. Okay, no, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I, this is nasty TV interview. Uh, okay, I, no, I, I wanna. Okay, cool. Can we just carry on? Yeah. Okay, I wanna, I wanna speak about something that you really been passionate about lately. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been seeing you gaming like crazy, and yeah. there's some activations that you you plugging. Yeah. Um, I like you doing Twitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like it when rappers just decide, yo. Let me just do something outside of what people know me to be. Yeah. You asked me a question before we started this podcast. Like, Tia, why did you do a podcast? Yeah. You know, like it's making me think, like, why did you decide, like, yo, my gaming, I want people to know that part of me. Uh I'm trying to be as honest as possible without yeah. sounding like a media trained fucking prick. Yeah. Uh started gaming in 2020 during quarantine. That's when we started playing Call of Duty Warzone. Got super fucking obsessed with it. Mm. And then started to get really good at it, mm-hmm. like a year after that. Now I'm like, I'm I'm fucking decent, dog. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm an actual good fucking player. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, I'm super passionate about this thing. I watch it all the time. If you go to my YouTube history right now, it's just Warzone videos. I watch it. It's like, you know like how you guys watch sports? <laughs> yeah. I watch Warzone like that. I yeah. like niggas doing different type of shit. Oh, yeah. We also, we're, we we built a, see the home I grew up in, in Durban, a little mm-hmm. I changed that into a, a gaming center slash studio. Oh damn! Yeah, we're, we're in this final stages now. It's mm-hmm. just it's just taking forever. But like once we get all the equipment in there and everything is nice and everything is like ready, that's gonna be up and running. And that's a gaming center. So everyone in the hood who who's really good at these games but doesn't really know that these it could be a career mm-hmm. type of vibe. You go in there. Now you can be a content creator, bro. You can be a spectator for the game. You can be an actual player in the game. You can be a graphic editor for us. Mm -hmm. You can be all these different things. You can start a podcast over there because Mm -hmm. we're going to have all this equipment that allows you to stream. So you can do all these things over there. Or you can just go to the next room and record music and stuff like that. So it's also just like servicing the hood also. Just showing showing them that it's like, yo, all these things that we see, all these kids overseas do, it's like they just have the platforms. We build the platforms here. We're going to be like that too. They're not special more than us yeah shit we're special too another thing um mm-hmm. that makes you an anomaly is right like from your generation of artists and rappers yeah um you might be one of the few if not the only one that brands are gravitating to mm. you know yeah. um you have a relationship with mercedes benz yes, you have a relationship with samsung mm-hmm. You know, we've G-Star. seen you collaborate, G Star. Mm-hmm. We've seen you collaborate with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, why you think these brands come to Nasty C? Because it can't just just because you're dope. Yeah, like no, come okay. to Nasty C and say, "Yo, I want to collaborate. I want a relationship with Nasty C." Yeah. Why? 
we're we're mm-hmm. we're very intentional about that kind of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. We understand that uh, brands hold a lot of power, but also they need us as influential people and people mm-hmm. who can touch people's hearts. So it's like we need each other, you know. And we're very we're very intentional about like how how our brand looks. Yeah. I say our brand because it's me and the team. It's not just yeah, me. SCC is a brand. It's not an individual. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole team behind me, bro. And it's like. They're like, you're not going to see me online smoking or online with a bottle taking it straight to the face or, you know what I mean? There might be every now and then something might pop up because I'm human, so I will make mistakes. But it's like, I'm not out here wilding, trying to be like someone else just to look cool for like a hot hour and then after that, like, you bro, know what, what I mean? you're saying is actually really, really Yeah, bro, important, keep it bro. clean, man. The brand's yeah. not going to mess with you if, you if you're just a messy dude, dog. These mm-hmm. people have to maintain and sustain their brand, too. So they, they're not going to back you like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So keep keep your shit clean, dog. You don't, you don't hear about Mercedes-Benz getting into no drama. No, so you can't hear about me getting into no drama. Understand? Yes. And I need to be very presentable. I need to be able to walk up to people. And the first thing they think about when I walk in a room is like, what does this guy have to offer this time around? Not, mm-hmm. ah, let's do a background check on this guy. Ah, does he match our brand? That's mm-hmm. never the case with me. It's never... It's, con- there's no controversy. I don't give a fuck yeah. what brand it is, dog. When we walk in this, like, when we set up the meeting, I under will call them pre-hand and be like, yo, uh, Nessa C has this dope idea. We have this dope idea. We're trying to do ABC. Ah, ah, ah. And they were like, yeah, for sure. Let's set up a date, time, place, whatever. And let's, let's, let's see if we can make it happen. And it's always like a conversation. It was like, okay, how do we make it happen? Versus, uh... Hmm. Okay, let's just give us a give us a week. Hmm. Let's do our research and see what kind of person you are and da 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 da. It's never that. You know, we we don't get snubbed like that. Why I'm saying this shit is important. Listening to you is like a lot of kids think um the only way to make an impact yeah uh in this industry is for you to be controversial. You know, um they think they have to have the most antics yeah. on the internet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just saying, yo, I'm this successful because I keep it clean. Yeah. I don't smoke on camera. I don't drink. That is a refreshing message for the people out there. Bro. Yeah. I think, I think especially rappers, because you don't really mm-hmm. see that with like Fact. singers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Man. It's like rappers. I think with rappers, it's like we're so caught up in this whole thing. I don't know what it is, bro. It's like no one even tells you to do this, but automatically it's just something that you do. You think, okay, I'm a rapper. What does a rapper need? I need tattoos. I need to smoke some weed. I need some bitches around me. I need a fancy car. I need a chain. I need all these things. Damn, they sound good though. But carry on, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's like it's, we're programmed like that, though. Because that's that's what we see, and that's what we yeah. inspire to be yeah. like. You understand? But then yeah. it's like that that age and that era yeah. is like it's it's still here. It's yeah. still a partners, but it's like you don't have to be like that. Facts. Do you understand? You can be yourself, dog, mm-hmm. and you don't you don't have to do all these things, mm-hmm. and and. You don't, we look at like, we're not looking at it with a realistic eye. You can't look at someone from the States who does a bunch of pills and has a bunch of face tats and shit like that, who is super successful and think you can do the same thing mm-hmm. here in SA. You are lying to yourself. Facts. Stop that. First of all, these guys, when they're coming up, they're getting paid 5,000 USDs. Yeah. When they're coming up with one mm-hmm. song, that's not even on Billboard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do the math for do the, the math. niggas. I don't know. Do the like, math for yeah. it. That's a lot of money, man, for an up-and-coming artist. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it's like, over here, and I say, you have to be very careful, dog. Think about it in a realistic manner. Stop, stop. Like, don't be dumb, dog. Just open your eyes, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, we're in SA. A currency's different. All right, the shows are not coming as frequently as they, they go down over there. Those people Thanks. over there love chaos. They love uh, uh, crazy shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They buy into that. Mm-hmm. They buy into that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Sex and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Over here... Think about how how the public perceives stuff like that. You have a bunch of face tats and and you're a messy person. You're a messy person, straight yeah. up. We have a thing called Ubuntu. Ubuntu, if it's line of it, mm. so people are not gonna look at you and think, "Oh my God, this guy's gnarly." Let me fucking <laughs> no. <laughs> We're an essay, dog. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Just just look at it with with a, a realistic mind, and and you know you you'll get a better understanding and know how to fucking. Bro, you just become a role model. Do you realize that? Hey. I don't like that one. <laughs> so I can't make mistakes. Oh, shit. No, you're Crazy. human, though. You oh, just okay. said it. You're not perfect. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think... As long as, I can, as long as I can still be human, I like that. I like being a role model. Yeah, and I feel I like know. we don't have enough role models. Yeah. What Cole said, you're right. yeah. there's no role models. Yeah, man. You're right. I think it's, it's just really dope that 
I've experienced so much and I'm still so young and, and mm -hmm. I can I can share so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's really dope. I've been blessed that way, dog. You have. Yeah. Major, really. And you are wise beyond your years. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really important we have you because if an older person is like speaking to the younger guys, it might feel like, ah, you don't understand. It feels bro. like a lecture. You didn't grow up in the same generation. Yeah. I think when they get it from you, it, 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 it really touches, you know what I'm saying, the soul because it's like, nah, this is someone close to my age bracket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when a, when an older person says it, it feels like a lecture. It's very hard to listen yeah. to. Yeah, you need someone that'll say it in your language. Now I feel that. I understand that 100%, man. It's a blessing, bro. I have some merch for you, though. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. We have some Iverson merch for you over here, dog. Man, Welcome I feel you special. To the, to the nobody, army, nobody's ever given me a, a present on the show. Yeah, dog. And nobody has that, by the way. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm lit that. out here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I had Casper's album, like... Uh, two months before it came out, I'm getting yeah. nah, Addison merch before they come out. Nah, you litty, boy. You litty. Shh, I can't Trust fuck it. with me. Please talk to some other niggas. You nah. podcast niggas are not on my level for real. I'm being <laughs> nah, for real. Facts. I'm not playing. Okay, facts. so damn shit. Yeah, now nah, we out here. You know, bro. pink is my shit. You see me? I in pink. have you. Where I see you? Know you what I mean? Bro. Yeah, man. Only, like only camera. confident, only confident niggas can rock pink. Yeah, you yeah. lame ass niggas cannot rock pink. Damn, ass I'm feeling this, you know? I'm on my killer cam. Nah, thank you. Damn. Bro. I appreciate thank it, bro. bro. Oh, damn. And tease. Damn. Yeah, I appreciate bro. it, bro. Um, thank you for coming and my pleasure. Pause. But I like <laughs> You see what I'm saying? My mind wasn't even there, dog. My mind didn't go there. But now that you said that, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had you to know? before we leave the nah, show. Nah, 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 thank you, bro. Thank you, man. And to give you your flowers too, man. Shout out, shout out to you guys also for fucking paving this way, you know? We we have it like I, I this is coming back to my mind right now mm -hmm. because we spoke about it earlier before yeah. before the camera started rolling, but yeah. like we we have it easier because of you guys, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh guys like fucking AKA Rest mm -hmm. in Peace, you mm -hmm. know, uh Cass, mm -hmm. you, Pro Kid, mm -hmm. Pro Verb and mm -hmm. all these guys. You guys, you guys really you guys opened the door for us, man. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. You you guys deserve your flowers too. Absolutely. Much love, 100%. Much love, 100%. Much love, much love, much love. Yes, sir. Um 10th episode <laughs> we in a Samsung building. Come on, man. Catch us we if you here. Catch us if you can, please. I dare you. El Tito Podcast. I want to shout out everybody in the team because this is our 10th episode. You know what I'm saying? It's a big moment, like, man. Yeah. So I, I got I to gotta shout out everyone behind the cameras on this episode. Uh, we're going to start with Mr. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> his name is Cabello, you know. <laughs> we need to give him the love. You know what I'm saying? I want to give a shout out to Pocky. That's a sound guy. A new sound guy. A sound has been sounding amazing for the last three episodes because yeah. of him. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Pocky. Shout, um, shout out to Pange. Um, he keeps on buying girls roses for more words, you know. So... <laughs> <laughs> So shout out to Pange, shout out to my boy Denzo. He's he's lit with the graphics, yeah, yeah. you know. So if you need some graphics, hit him up on 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 social media. Right, his name is what? What's I'm Rap Designs. I'm Rap Designs. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Get at them if you want some dope graphics. Shout out to Trotro. You know what I'm saying? That's a lady in our team, making sure everything flows right. If yeah, there's yeah. no lady in the team, there's it's no structure. Right, right? There's no yeah. structure at all. Facts, facts. You know what I'm saying? And last but not least, we got C's, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's got a fresh new haircut right now. He's in some Feeling Yeezy. Himself. Yo, I saw this he man taking Yeezy's. a picture. Mint, Bro, <laughs> mint like, interviews. Dope. Someone went and took a picture. He, he's acting candid. It was like, is the camera good? It was like, oh, for <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, you know the camera's there. Talk. Nah, shout uh, out. And, and shout out to C's because he just launched his new... Ah! Yeah, this is South Africa. It wouldn't this be South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. So... Let's close it up. C just launched his new relationship. So all you girls, you know what I'm saying? Stay away from C's. He's a focused guy right now. Uh, he's pushing the relationship thing. You know what I'm saying? Him and his relationship is out there. So him and his girl, shout out. Take care of C's. He's very soft and sensitive. So don't play with the homie, okay? Damn. Don't play with the homie like that. Um, thank you to Samsung to close it off. And specifically, uh, I want to give a shout out to the Samsung in Eastgate, you know what I'm saying? And Clear Waters, because they've been taking care of me. I just moved into a new place and I had to make sure I'm late with the furniture and got me right and got amazing service. So I need to give them a shout out for this one. Mm -hmm. And thank you to everybody that's been watching our podcast. I'm so blessed that we've got to 10 episodes. That means a lot to me and this yeah. milestone. 
and shout out to all our sponsors. And shout out to my mama, man. Yes, I'm sir. Like Let's that. go. You know what I'm saying? LTO Podcast, we out. Much love. Yes, sir. Don't buy my Fucking fire. <laughs> Fucking fire. How long was-